Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Now it's been a little while since I've done a video. I was up in London this weekend um, seeing the outlaws, um, so there was no time to do a video this weekend. So, but I've been thinking about what ne what would be interesting to do next. And some of you may remember from some of my other videos, I've got quite a large Nepenthes cross ventrata in there, which is like my first Nepenthes. Uh, they're quite common, you can sort of find that uh, that hybrid in um, most garden centres, if they are selling this to, uh, Nepenthes, you'll often find them in a little hanging pot. Um, and I think I got mine in a very similar circumstance, but I think I got mine from uh, Hans Carnivorous Plants, I think, some time ago. Anyway, what's happened recently is it put on loads of growth, and now the space between each leaf that's being produced is starting to significantly extend. And that usually means it's going to start going into a vining stage because obviously Nepenthes are a type of vine. Um, although they're sort of rosette forming when young and stays relatively squat to the ground, it's not long before they start to climb for light. Um, and they also have variations between what's considered to be a lower picture and an upper picture. So you get two different types of pictures on the same plant, which is quite interesting. Uh, and in some species, that's very pronounced. However, all that aside, Mine is basically starting to clamber up now. It's in that little pot it's been in for ages and ages. It's starting to push up against the roof of the greenhouse. So I thought this would be a good time to take you guys along for a repotting video because it's going to, I can't, it's been in there for such that pot for such a long time. I can't actually remember what it's in. So I think the first thing we need to do is, whilst there's still a little bit of light, I'll pick you guys up. We'll go outside, we'll go and get it. Um, and then I'll set everything up in here. We'll take it out of the pot and we'll have a look at the media it's growing in, have a little look at the plant. All right. Okay, so I picked you guys up. You'll have to excuse some of the wobbliness. Let's go outside. To the greenhouse. The old days are really drawing in now. The security lights just come on. Some motorbikes going past on the road. We're really starting to get a lot more usable light. The days are drawing out. There's probably just enough light in the greenhouse for everybody to see what's going on. Also, we're going to be doing something very soon with this um, vanilla orchid. Um, it's got a little bit light green here, which is getting a bit too much sunlight, but uh, we're going to repot that and give it something to climb up pretty soon as well. So, here's the culprit up here. You can see it's starting to get really long leaves. Uh, extending up and they're pushing up against, if I show you one more, they're pushing up against the roof of the greenhouse. So it's well overdue for time to, uh, and uh, time to repot it. It's in a tiny little pot. There's also my Dendrobium devonianum's hanging off the side of it. Just move that out of the way slightly. There we go, that's him out of the way. Uh, so we'll grab this guy off of there. Right, trying to fall over. There he is, that's what he looks like at the moment. I've tidied up, we'll have to pour the water out of these uh, pitchers as well, because otherwise it's just gonna make a mess everywhere. Right, back to the greenhouse, I'm afraid I need two hands for this. Okay, so as some of you guys are gonna be aware already, these, the traps on Nepenthes work by they hold a digestive fluid inside the pitchers, which basically um, the, the insect falls in over the lip of the picture. If I bring it up to the camera and choose a decent sized one, you'll probably get a better idea. There we go. So if I hold, so here are the pictures. They basically drop in over that lip inside this um, highly evolved leaf. And in the bottom, it's full, of, um, it's full of liquid. So basically the insect drowns, floats to the bottom, and then special glands at the bottom of the picture um, basically absorb or dissolve the uh, they absorb the nitrogen out of the insect as it decomposes so what you've got to do well what I'm going to do before I go any further with this is I'm going to pour as much of the pitcher liquid out as I can now don't panic these can just be refilled afterwards to approximately a third full using nice bit of rainwater. The uh, the plant does have the ability to refill it itself, but I always think it's a good idea just to give it a hand. Right, 
and it also stops it going everywhere when it comes to repotting because as soon as you invert the plant it will just piddle all this water out all over the surface that you're working on so it's nearly done yeah, that's almost all of them now yeah that's pretty much all of them right I'm going to tip this out and then um, and then we'll take the pot off okay garden scissors well not garden scissors kitchen scissors are going to be extremely useful for this because uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to trim some of the old dead leaves off the plant um, you've got to be quite careful with Nepenthes they've got they've only got very fine black wiry roots okay so if I hold this up to the camera hopefully you're going to be able to see what it's in so this is a it's like a mix of gravel there's some shiny bits in there which look a lot like vermiculite um, and there's also a lot of sphagnum moss there's a big wadge of sphagnum moss right down the bottom so it smells it smells pretty good actually to be honest I don't think it's uh, too bad at all so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a lot of the sphagnum moss just to start off with that's just like a pad on top of the actual plant I think there might also be a basal shoot coming out of the actual plant as well what I'm going to do is put the sphagnum moss to one side and that can go in the bottom of the pot um, as a just to stop any of the media dropping out some grass more sphagnum moss it looks like there's two basal shoots in here and the light isn't very good what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, put this down for just a second like this I'm going to put my head torch on it and then I'm going to bring the plant over so you guys can have a look at it because I think it's quite interesting over here I have a cheap head torch okay because still in my uh, complete novice approach to orchid growing um, I didn't install a light in the greenhouse which is a real pain in the backside when you want to go out and check your greenhouse at night so at some point I will be putting a light in right so hopefully you'll better now if I light it up if we look down the base here so this is the just some old dead leaves see this bright green what looks like a little shoot just here by my finger that's um, basically uh, new shoots coming off of the plant here. So there's two in fact, there's one just there and one just here. So we have to make sure we save those and keep them on because then we're gonna have multiple growth points coming from the same plant. So that's gonna be cool. One of the pots has already emptied uh, quite a large amount of liquid all over my hands. So you have to be super careful because and the Pentes have very fine roots, so what I'm going to do is just rub the media gently like this, pull away what I can, and really take my time over it because what I don't want to be doing is causing mass amounts of root damage. Because uh, that, especially now we've seen those basal shoots, we want to make sure we save that as much as possible. Now these are a vine; they grow most of them. So there's you've got low altitudes. Um, you've got and you've got extreme high altitude um, growing species of Nepenthes uh, I would say that the larger the vast majority of them grow at very high altitudes uh, on the sides of mountains where they get to enjoy uh, sort of warm ish days and very cold sort of like down to 13 14 15 degree nights they don't like high heat at all the hybrids are a lot better equipped to deal with um, high temperatures and adapt a lot better to um, fluctuations and temperature extremes than species do. Um, a lot of my highland Nepenthes, such as Nepenthes loei, uh, Nepenthes erysilocoides, and especially Nepenthes jacqueliniae, really hate the high heat, the high temperatures in the greenhouse. Um, it's, it's basically an ongoing battle um, to keep temperatures as low as possible for them um, because otherwise they'll, they'll sulk, they'll basically stop growing uh, completely 
um, and the, the they look really sickly and just just generally really sad. And it takes them a little while to recover from that and for uh, growth to get back up to normal, um, which is a real shame because uh, there's some really rare and interesting Nepenthes out there. And if you can't provide the appropriate conditions uh, or the optimum growing conditions for them, then you're going to really struggle growing them. Uh, these aren't really um, the ideal sort of windowsill plant. They're not like an orchid where they're going to be able to adapt um, quite easily to uh, like a, a low humidity or warmer environment. If um, it isn't right, they, they will let you know immediately and they will sulk and people lose Nepenthes all the time. So I'm getting it down now to most of this is coming off now. Most of the old media is off. I don't want to go overboard. What I don't want to do is damage what's here. So we've got like a core, a core of roots here. I still want to get some more of this media off. So what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to put it under the, the, the water, the water butt. I'm going to run some water over this, and try and clean some more of this off. So give me two seconds. We'll come back and hopefully we'll have a better look at the root system. Okay, so I've given that a good wash off now. Here's the plant. Um, I'll give it a good wash off outside, which has exposed the um, root system quite nicely. I've managed to make an incredible mess uh, of the kitchen. So what I'm gonna do now is just, using a pair of scissors, just nibble off some of these unwanted uh, leaves because they're just dead and in the way. So just being very careful of the actual plant, I can just nip these off. And then we can have a look at how fine the roots are and how well surprisingly small they are for such what can be con I would consider to be quite a large plant so we can just nip these off out of the way like that there we go right if I lift this up well that's it dripping everywhere and knocking the camera if I light it up you should be able to see here are those basal shoots I was talking about so these are forming new leaves and coming up um, sort of alongside the main growth. And here you can see some of these really fine roots. They almost look a bit like roots from a lime tree. They're sort of really fine um, and just proportionately small compared to the remainder of the plant. Now I've been super careful not to break off any of these as well. So I mean, that really is the sum of the roots uh, for this plant is in this, uh, in this mat or this cone of, um, of roots. Um, so I've washed most of it off. I'm not going to go too much madder than that because uh, the next step will be, will be to prepare the, uh, the media that we're going to use. So uh, what I'll do is I'll grab a few bits together and then I'll talk you through what I'm using. Like I said before, there's quite a number of different um, media that people like to use to grow theirs in. Some people will just rely heavily on sphagnum moss. What others will use something that's a lot more like a standard CP mix. Now I've tried just normal 50 parts sand, 50 part peat, um, or half peat, half sand, which I say makes a little bit more sense. And they've grown absolutely fine, absolutely fine. I've also used a combination of all four of these elements. Um, so what I've used is um, a proportion of what I would consider a standard uh, carnivorous plant mix. So that comprising of peat and sand. Um, with some mixed in sphagnum moss, some coarse grade orchid bark, and some grow stone to keep it aerated. And uh, I've also used this mix. And um, to be honest, I can't really notice a significant difference with the species that I'm growing, depending on the um, what sort of media I actually plant them in. They don't seem to be particularly fussy, as long as you can remember one key thing, and that is it has to retain moisture. Okay, these are moisture loving plants. If you let them dry out, you will kill them. It's as simple as that. I'll zoom out and we'll mix this all up uh, and then I'll hold it up to the camera so you guys can have a look at it once it's all, uh, all mixed up. So this is the mix that I'm gonna be using. Uh, it's probably nowhere near enough or probably miles too much in order to fill up the container um, I'm gonna be putting it in. So there's quite a lot of there's also quite a lot of aquarium gravel already in the um, what I call my stand what I do I mix up loads and loads of carnivorous plant media which consists of 
uh, peat moss, uh, compost, um, horticultural sand, which is I wash again just to make sure that it's nice and clean, and then aquarium gravel to make sure it's nice and uh, free draining. So um, that's pretty much what the mix should look like once it's all mixed up. So you've got these lumps of growth stone in there that keep it nice and aerated. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put this into the pot into which I intend to put the orchid, uh, put the nepenthes in, so I know I've got enough. Which I'm going to be using this green pot here, which is a lot deeper and a lot broader than what the one we were current we were using or the plant was in beforehand. Now a good trick. This has got a recessed hole in it, so it's got like a little, so it's going to maintain quite a high amount of moisture in it. So I'm actually going to just block the hole ever so slightly like that, just to stop any media coming out, just using a piece of sphagnum moss. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put all of this in here. And I can already tell, I'm pretty sure I haven't got enough. Which is the Oliver's Greenhouse way, not very good estimating how much material there. So I'm, I think I'm an inch and a half off the top of the pot. So I'll go and get a, a little bit more to make sure we can fill this up properly. Okay, so now I know I've got the correct amount in there. What I'm gonna do is just pick this little fella up here and holding him very carefully in the pot at the desired level, like this. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit in the bottom first of all, so the roots just aren't against the pot. Hold them in place like this, and I'm also going to use this opportunity to move it over slightly so the main plant's slightly more central than it was before. And I'm just going to backfill the pot with the media that we have mixed up. Okay, so here's the plant all um, potted up. What I need to do is just be careful to clear gently around the basal rosettes, just with a finger, just to move any of the uh, the peat or the, the potting media away from those. We don't want to rot those off. Um, I haven't firmed it down particularly hard. Um, I've just literally finger fingered it in as gently as I can, just so it settles. I've tapped the pot a few times as well. There's going to be some settlement of the media over time, usually, uh, and as most of you will be aware, the first watering makes everything sort of sink into the pot uh, a considerable amount anyway. I'm just gonna go around and just fill up a few little areas here. Because of the, the fact that it's like, almost forms like a rosette of leaves, it can be a real pain in the backside getting the media in and around it. So if you notice there's a few bits of um, compost and the media has got on top of the plant and stuff, a good spray off with the hose We'll soon sort that problem out. I'm just going to nip any of the tops, these manky tops, off of some of the pictures. Some of the ones that are dying sort of halfway back, I just nip those bits off because they look unsightly. So you can just zip those off like this. It makes them a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Like I say, we'll give it a good drenching down um, when we put it back in the greenhouse. And the next thing to do is what if hopefully I can get this over the top of the actual plant itself, because that's gonna provide support to it, um, and hopefully give it something to climb up as well. So I'm gonna pop that on there like that. I'm gonna be quite careful, because what I don't wanna do is to squash it or put it in a position where it may not be particularly comfortable. And also where I can get it out again later at a later date because as this thing keeps growing, eventually I plan to move it onto the ground in the greenhouse and train it up over all the inside of the roof. So that's what it's like at the moment. It's getting some support from the actual hook wires themselves. So the next thing to do is just to go and give it a good wash off, water it in, and then it'll be ready to go. 
Okay, so thanks very much for coming along for uh, this little tutorial slash watch Oliver struggle to repot on the penthes. Um, they are really pretty straightforward. It's not a very difficult thing to do. Um, you can see it's here in this bigger pot now. What I did was I took it outside, hung it on the washing line, and then just literally poured the best part of an entire watering can of rainwater over it. That washed any excess media off of the leaves, and it's actually refilled um, pretty much all the pitchers as well. So um, that's worked out pretty well. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section down below. If you'd like this video, um, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up thingy down below and um, also tune in again because I've got some, uh, got some good ideas, got some new cool videos coming up. We're going to have a look at the orchids which I've saved from the garden centre next week um, and um, we'll see how things are coming along. Thanks for watching.